Hey guys, Break here, and today we're going to be talking about how the richest players in WoW make their gold. And I'm not just talking about a few million gold, I'm talking about hundreds of millions of gold, up to a billion gold. I'm talking about people like Magicus, people like Hikons, people like Mog's Addiction, loads and loads of people all over Twitter, and the people who aren't on Twitter and keep to themselves but still make lots of gold. All those guys, how do they do it? Let's talk about it. Also, don't know if it's a coincidence this guy's called Brego, but it's a bit creepy. Anyway, I find a good way to think about the richest players in the game is kind of to think about them as real-life businessmen, real-life billionaires, because that's a kind of good way to compare them. So if you think about the very richest people in the world, they don't really trade time for money in the same way that we might. You know, they don't work per hour. They don't get paid £5 an hour or... £5,000 an hour or 50000 an hour in the same way that we might. You know, they make a lot of passive income, a lot of income from sort of big trades, a lot of income from shares, a lot of income from market moves, that kind of thing. They don't really make the gold per hour. And in a similar vein, the richest players in WoW do not make their gold per hour. What do I mean by this? Well, they don't go out and farm, for example. Even the very best farms in the game might net you, what, 100,000 gold? You'd be lucky to find a farm like that. But even if you did, that's nothing compared to what the you know, very richest players in the game make when they spend an hour playing the game. So they don't do anything like farming. And even if you're something like a, a boost seller, you can make pretty decent gold per hour. But it's still not the same. You know, I compare it to kind of like a, a very wealthy consultant or a very wealthy lawyer in real life who might charge a few thousand dollars per hour maybe you could compare boosters to that so it's it is very good but it's not the billionaire sort of wealth it's not the billionaire style that's not what the richest wow players do so what they really do is make passive income what do i mean by this well they post stuff up on the auction house and they leave it and then it just sells and they could be doing something else so they're not wasting any time they're just leaving it there and eventually it sells just like a rich businessman will go to sleep and they'll wake up and they'll be richer because their stuff is sold. It's exactly the same kind of thing. But how do these rich WoW players get this stuff to sell in the first place? Well, most of them do flipping. So if those of you who don't know what flipping is, I've done a few videos on it before, but it's basically when you go on the auction house, buy something that's cheap and then relist it on the auction house for more money and it sells and you just get a load of extra gold without doing anything and it just took you about five seconds that's pretty much what all of the richest players in the game do a lot of them specialize in different things so a lot of them specialize in battle pets others specialize in boes others specialize in transmog all that kind of stuff but usually they do pretty much everything whatever's cheap they'll buy it up and they'll try and sell it for more in terms of the actual practicalities how you actually do flipping I'm not going to really go into it in this video, but the basic idea is you set up a kind of shopping list, which you can do on lots of different add-ons, particularly TSM, a shopping search. I've got a few favorites. I've got my Battle Pets one. I had my one for Raid Gear in uh, Legion. I had some others, some Legendaries, the, the Diadem, a lot of people flipping that one. But for example, you set up these searches and then on your character, you go and you search once a day. And if anything's really cheap, for example, these pets here that are like 20% market value, I might buy them up and relist them for a lot more. That's an example of flipping. But you can do it for anything, and there's lots of different ways you can do it. You can do the kind of pretty stacking, which is a form of flipping. You can flip materials. You can flip any sort of gear, basically anything. But that's basically what you do. And you can use stuff like the Undermine Journal. You can set up alerts on that. You can use loads of different websites and loads of different add-ons to help you. But there's a lot of ways you can do it. I'm not really going to go into it, but you get the basic idea. Now, I do quite a lot of battle pets and BOE flipping, particularly if you watched my mailbox openings from the end of Legion. I was making around 5 million gold a week just doing this. Very, very easy, spending about an hour a day maximum, and it was bringing in a nice bit of profit, which was really nice. But I have to admit, there are lots of WoW players making a ton more than I was, just doing similar things or even doing different things, just doing it better, doing it more extreme. You know, mine wasn't anything special. It's just an example of what the very richest players will do to make their gold. 
So lots of you might be thinking, okay, so I just have to flip stuff. I just have to buy it for when it's cheap and sell it for more. But I'm trying to do that right now on my server and it's not working. So why can't I be one of the richest players? Well, guys, it's all about scaling. So the richest players in WoW scale very, very effectively. People like Mog's Addiction have a character, I think, on every single server on the US, which they have a ton of gold on. Magicus, I'm pretty sure, has a character on every single server in the EU. And he makes a ton of gold on each of those characters. I mean, these guys scale massively across servers. And that's a very important thing to realize about these rich WoW players. They play on a lot of servers. It's very, very hard to be a hundred millionaire on just one server, if not impossible. Well, it's not impossible, but it's, it's, it's very, very hard. It's a lot easier to make gold, sort of five or 10 million gold on multiple servers. And that all adds up to a hundred million or 200 million. And that's what most people do, including myself. And the reason for this is quite simple, is that you can't really make a ton of gold on a ton of flips, you know, just on one server, because there's not going to be the deals. There might be one deal a day or something you can do, but that's about it. You're not going to get really lucky and get like hundreds of cheap items randomly posted. But if you're on a lot of servers, then you're going to find deals across them, maybe one on each server, but you're on 10 servers, so you found 10 deals in a day. Each of those deals makes you what, like a 50k profit if you flip a BOE or flip a pet, and that all adds up to 500k rather than just the 10k or 50k you'd make on the one server. So that's kind of the reason people play on multiple servers. There's just more opportunity for deals, more opportunity for bargaining. And if you're selling battle pets, of course, you can learn those and then repost them on different servers. So battle pets are a bit different. You can actually move them from one server to another, just like moving gold. And that's quite interesting and that's a lot of a reason why a lot of the big big wow players do trade in battle pets as well but again it's just like real life the big companies they operate in multiple countries and the big wow players operate multiple servers it's pretty obvious but a lot of people don't tend to realize that when they hear about someone who has a billion gold or 100 million gold they just don't quite realize how they actually have that it's not like someone has a billion gold on one server not at all it's about having it across multiple servers. And another important thing to realize is that the richest WoW players almost always operate on the medium pop servers and the lower pop servers. Now, I know some very, very rich WoW players that operate across multiple high pops. And I follow a couple on Twitter who actually do that, but it's very, very hard and it requires a lot of playtime because you get undercut very often. So you have to keep swapping between the different servers and undercutting and all of that. It is a lot of effort. But the very rich WoW players usually operate on the kind of medium pop and lower pop servers. Why is this? Well, number one, there's a lot bigger chance for high profits. If you're crafting something, if you're flipping something, there'll be a lot less competition. So you can control the market and sell for a lot more. And at the same time, you don't have to constantly log in to undercut stuff because people won't be undercutting you as much. That's just how it works. It's fairly obvious that... If you want to make a lot of gold on multiple servers, you do not want to choose the high pop servers. It just won't work. And in fact, if you look at someone like Hikons, who actually crafts on multiple servers, which is a bit harder, a bit more advanced, because you actually have to get that character up and running on that server, either with a boost or level it yourself or whatever. It takes a lot more time. But if you can craft on those lower pop servers, the profits are huge. Throughout Legion, a lot of people were making tens of millions of gold from the Dark Moon cards. And whilst that was the case at the start of BFA, most of that gold has dried up. But on the lower pop servers, people are still making tens of millions of gold with the Dark Moon cards just because there's hardly any competition. So if you do have a crafter like a scribe on one of these lower pop servers, as well as a flipper who's going to buy stuff cheap and sell it for high, you can make even more gold because you just can control certain markets and it's not like it's the only source of income for you. You've got multiple servers. So it doesn't matter that stuff takes ages to sell on these lower pop servers because you can just post it up, log on to one of your other servers, do something else. You can come back to that server and it's probably sold after a day or two. So it doesn't matter that it takes longer to sell because you're operating across multiple servers. So another thing that these really rich WoW players do is investments. Now I do a lot of videos on investments, investing in stuff before a raid, for example, such as anchor weed, people still spam me in trade, or investing in something during a holiday event for when after the holiday event it will go up in price, you know, something like the minion of Grumpus or the Swift Love Bird or something like that, 
or the Halloween pets even. Now again, this is very, very easy to do. It doesn't take much time. Time is money. You know, you can easily invest. If you're a very rich WoW player, you can spend a couple of hours across multiple servers investing tens of millions of gold into a certain item. So you spend two hours and you spend 10 million gold buying up all the different Halloween pets that you can. And then you wait six months and you sell them for double and you've just made 10 million profit in two hours work. You guys see what I mean? They spent two hours doing that. Even though they waited six months, eventually it sold. And in two hours, these guys made 10 million gold. Now, that's what the richest WoW players can do. They do have patience. That's one thing. And it's not like they need to get that gold back quickly because they've got so many other things going on. They've got so much other gold. They've got their short-term flips. They've got their crafting. They don't need to worry about all those battle pets they've just invested in. And it's just really, really easy gold. And again, you can just easily compare it to real world businessmen. They often make investments such as that and they'll leave them and then they'll you know, come back on them if they've invested in property or you know, even in stocks or something. And it's going to make them a lot of gold with hardly any work because once you get that rich, you don't have time for silly investments or silly sort of farming or whatever that's going to make you a few thousand gold in a long time. You know, these guys can make millions of gold every hour just because how they spend their time. And they can also do stuff like the big moves, like the big guild bank moves. If you guys watched my old Gold Cap Challenge series, I did a couple of these. And a lot of the very richest WoW players still do this. So they'll buy up a load of herbs or something on one server, like 10 million golds worth. They'll then do a guild bank transfer with all those herbs to another server. And then they'll resell all of those herbs that sell for double on that server. And again, they've just doubled their gold. They've just made 10 million gold in literally an hour just spent buying up all the herbs on one server and then the transfer and then selling it on another server they've just made another 10 million gold you know and how long would it take you to farm that gold or how long would it take you to even flip that gold so these guys do big market moves that make them big big gold because they can afford to do so but it really is all about maximizing time i know the people i follow that have a character on every single server and gold on every single server they have literally like three accounts. So each account logs on to like 30 servers. Say there's 90 servers. Each account will log on to 30 to repost the auctions. And whilst that might seem like a lot of effort, 30 is a lot quicker than 90. And say they have three screens running and they've got, you know, each one, each account on a different screen and they log across on 30 different realms on each one. At least it saves them three times the time than it would if they only had one account. And that's really something, again, that you need to think about. You guys want to you know, really make sure you use your time wisely. And doing stuff like getting a second account will really help with that and all sorts of stuff like that. So if you guys do want to get into big, big gold territory, which uh, you can do and is always fun, then you just got to think about a few things. I wouldn't start off trying to go onto multiple servers and get stuff on all those different servers. You want to start off on one server you know, and actually try and make serious gold on one server, doing stuff like crafting, doing stuff like flipping, doing stuff like whatever you want to do, really. And once you've mastered that server, you can then move on to a different server, and then you can start to expand out to multiple servers. Because it's once you're on the multiple servers that it becomes a lot easier, but it does take a long time to get to that point. And obviously, you need to do things like learn TSM. If you don't have TSM, then it just really doesn't work because you're going to spend way too long posting things rather than just kind of going AFK and then doing the mouse scroll wheel macro to post all these 60 things. You know, without TSM, you're pretty much screwed. But the most important thing, I think, is just to stop thinking about gold per hour in terms of actually spending your own time farming the gold. You actually want to try and make as much passive gold as possible. And by passive, I mean just spending a few minutes actually crafting profitable items or a few minutes searching the auction house to flip stuff. And then the rest of the time can be spent on other servers doing the same thing. Say you spend five minutes searching the auction house for cheap battle pets each server. You can fuck 12 servers like that. And say each time you find battle pets to flip worth 50k, then you know 50k profit 50k times 12 is 600k so in an hour you've just made 600k that eventually will come to you passively rather than say doing an hour of herb farming that might make you 50k 
And whilst that might come to you more immediately than the battle pets, it's all about getting that passive income rolling because otherwise you're going to have to spend way too long farming and stuff. And I know some people like that. Obviously, Student Albatross is uh, very, very wealthy in game, but he does spend a lot, a lot of time playing. And we obviously want to minimize the time playing. And unless you're a streamer or something, it's probably not worth it. Unless, of course, you really enjoy farming, again, like Student Albatross does, and then that's all good for you. If you can do something you love and make a lot of gold with it, then that is the perfect scenario. But for most other people, it's about maximizing the time you spend in the game and thinking like a big, rich WoW player, doing big, big moves. And the whole point about being on multiple lower medium pop servers, you know, the whole game would probably break if we all went and did that. It would just kind of wouldn't really work. But that is how the very wealthiest players make most of their gold because they can just log onto that server once a day. They can create a Darkmoon card that's eventually going to sell and for 100k profit. They can do a few flips that eventually will sell for 100k profit. And in five minutes, they've made 500k profit. All right, the gold won't come to them eventually, but it doesn't matter. They then log off and do the same thing on another server and another server, making 500k profit each time. And in an hour, you've got 5 mil, 10 mil. And yeah, it might not come to you all until the next year or the next few months but if you do that every day you've got so much gold and so much stuff built up on the auction house and so much passive income rolling in it's impossible not to make a ton of gold anyway guys that's it i hope you enjoyed a bit of a strange video but people always do ask me how how do the wealthiest players make their gold you know i'm on about sort of 40 million i'd say across my realms so there's a lot of people a lot wealthier than me and uh, you guys should check them out on Twitter, check out their YouTubes, etc. But yeah, everyone does the same kind of thing, really, just uh, specialize in different markets. So thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, see ya.